Recently, the Hebrew people dramatically escaped slavery in Egypt. It's a story that's captured the imagination of millions. And today, I'm joined by an eyewitness to those harrowing events, a brave man named Steve. First of all, congratulations on your miraculous escape from lifelong soul-crushing bondage. Thanks. I also have some very real concerns. Okay. Well, let's start from the beginning. When did you first start to realize you were witnessing something historic? When Aaron and Moses threw down their stick and it turned into a snake. What did you make of it when Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing? It obviously would have been wiser if Moses and Aaron had led with a less easily duplicatable trick, but that said, it was still a fantastic snake off, and in the end, Moses and Aaron's snake did eat the snakes of the Egyptian court magicians, which means that according to the transitive property, basically Moses and Aaron ate them. Which plague made the greatest impression on you? I particularly loved it when Moses threw soot in the air to give everyone boils, and I also agreed with his decision to turn the river into blood. How did that work? Did it coagulate? Oh yes. The capacity of blood to scab is truly a life-giving miracle, but it is horrible for shipping. The blood on the doorposts, the death of the Egyptian firstborns. It's true. If you had the blood on your door, nobody in your household died. But that doesn't excuse the fact that we've had a lot of communication issues from the top down, and no one made it clear that this was a one-time only thing. So my cousin Greg, who is a firstborn, put blood on his door about a week later, and then went and tried some risky experimental bass fishing techniques he'd been curious about, and he died. I'm sorry to hear that, Steve. He was doing what he loved. Word comes down that Pharaoh is letting you all go. Everybody grabs their things, onto whatever the future holds, everything looking up. Then walk me through what happened next. Pharaoh just had a minute to think about it and it occurred to him that, dang, that was a lot of slaves and it's going to take me a long time to get that many slaves back. Plus they took a bunch of our stuff. You stole from the Egyptians. Oh, we didn't steal from anyone. We just asked the Egyptians super nicely on the way out the door for most of their valuables and they were cool about it. Gave us a bunch of gold and silver and clothing. We took it as their way of saying sorry for all the years of unpaid backbreaking labor. And then? Pharaoh got all his chariots out and chased us down in the desert and trapped us against the sea. You all must have thought your collective goose was cooked. I gotta shoot straight with you. I think we all would have died right there at the hands of Pharaoh and his army if it weren't for the glorious power of complaining. Because we went straight to Moses and told him everything he was doing wrong, and he listened. And he went up on a rock and he raised his hands and he parted the sea, and then we walked through on dry ground. But the Egyptians followed you in. And I understand why. They could see how mismanaged our entire exodus had been up until this point, and they probably assumed we'd be easy pickings. We would have been if it weren't for the fact that the water crashed down on them and they all died. Did you sense a more positive mood in the crowd when you got to the other side and realized you were safe? In that moment, there was no denying what we had just seen, which is a testimony to the power of Moses and God and super insightful, relentless criticism from literally hundreds of people at once. You know, for just a moment there, I think we all kind of forgot about the systemic, terrible decision-making of our betters, and we spontaneously wrote and performed a really beautiful celebratory song. Would you be willing to sing it for us now? No. How would you respond to your critics who suggest that because of a lack of physical evidence of your time in Egypt, that perhaps you were never there at all, and that this entire ordeal is simply made up? Yeah, unfortunately, that's just one more place where I think we could have seen better leadership through this whole affair. Pharaoh says, oh, everybody can leave. And what do they do? They grab globs of dough and throw it on their back without even baking it because everybody's in such a hurry to flee for their lives. I'm standing there the whole time saying, stop. People are going to wonder if we were ever here. Let's chisel some stone monuments to commemorate our time in Egypt and then bury it in the sand real quick so that Pharaoh doesn't destroy it because of how understandably embarrassing this whole thing has been for him. But I was completely ignored. It's pretty clear to this reporter that yours is the one true God. That said, overall, how would you rate your Exodus experience? Positives, liberated from slavery, got a whole bunch of free money from the Egyptians, saw the hand of God in such a miraculous way that it would eliminate all question or doubt as to his existence or his intentions for our life. Negatives, terrible food, tons of hiking, better accommodations back in Egypt. On the whole, I'd give this exodus a three out of 10. Would not recommend. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did you feel in any way responsible for the cleanup? There were a lot of bloated bodies and horse parts, and it was such a nice sea. You want to leave it better than you found it, of course. But in the end, we figured the Egyptians had insurance, so we just left it. A well-funded outfit like that. I'm sure they have some sort of annihilated by a foreign deity writer. Thank you.